Do you think that Donovan Mitchell is going to be in a Utah Jazz jersey next season? Absolutely not. Listen, the Jazz have been relevant in the regular season. Obviously, last year having the best record in the NBA, and then seasons before that, you know, making the playoffs, whether that be the sixth or the fifth seed. And of course, at, since Donovan Mitchell's been on this team, they've been relevant again. They've been um, kind of making their name, I guess, renown to the league, I guess, kind of putting themselves back on the map. We all know that Utah's not the greatest market in the world for free agents, but then they go and get lucky and they draft, you know, Donovan Mitchell, a guy that's dynamic in his ability to shoot, get to the basket, has athleticism, be able to finish in between defenders, right, left hand. I mean, we already know Donovan Mitchell is probably one of the better up and coming stars in this league. And they haven't been able to capitalize on the potential that they've brought to the table. They go and they give Mike Conley a big extension. They go and they give Rudy Gobert an extension. They obviously go and they sign Jordan Clarkson to an extension. Uh, Bogdanovich and just a bunch of players, but it just seems like it's never enough in the postseason. It just seems like for whatever reason, Utah just cannot seal the deal and get out of either the first or second round. And I know that what we're talking about here is, is Donovan Mitchell going to stay? But you have to remember that paints a picture of not being able to win on the team that you just signed a Supermax contract with for the next four or five seasons. You also have to remember that Utah, like I had stated just a few moments ago, isn't exactly the greatest market. So attracting a big-time free agent, the odds are slim to none. You also have to take into consideration Donovan Mitchell is probably more than fed up with Rudy Gobert's antics, and that conversation or that comment that was said by Rudy over the last couple of days probably didn't sit well with Donovan for him to be like, dude, aren't you the dick that coughed on the microphone when COVID first started? Like, aren't you that guy? Why are you making this about you? Donovan's a better player than you, hands down. I don't care if you've won five Defensive Player of the Year awards. You're not giving me the offensive output that Donovan is. You're not giving me the playmaking capabilities that Donovan is. I'm sorry. You can block all the shots you want. You can average 14, 15 boards a game. Donovan's averaging 24 to 25 points a season since he's gotten into the NBA. And until Rudy Gobert can match that or supersede that, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is an easy decision, but it is. Donovan Mitchell is a better player, hands down, in a multiple facet of ways, and I think that he brings a lot to the table. There's been so much speculation <clears throat> excuse me, over the last couple of seasons about Donovan Mitchell returning home. He is a native New Yorker, grew up upstate. Uh, ironically enough, my high school played his high school, uh, Canterbury, and it, you know, there's just... Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is I'm not saying him coming to New York is going to make it any better because we all know that Kyle has a, a, a great love and passion for New York Knicks fans. And uh, him coming home doesn't mean that that's going to do anything for them. Granted, the Eastern Conference has been proven to be a little easier to manage as opposed to the Western Conference, so he might not have first-round exits if the Knicks were to actually kind of put a good team around him. But overall, I don't necessarily know if that's just a good fit for him because it's another team, an organization that is not doing well. It's another team that is not succeeding in its postseason endeavors. They're not in a rebuild mode, but they have a lot of shit going on, and I don't know if that shit is worth leaving Utah for because at least at the end of the day, you do know you have key role players that will defer to you because they know you're the number one option as opposed to Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, and a couple of other players that, you know, obviously R.J. a little bit more than, than Julius. R.J. knows that he's the future, and Julius is just trying to stay relevant. But what I'm getting at is... I think that Donovan, for his career, for his benefit, needs to leave. Now, whether he decides to go to Portland and be the you know second fiddle to Damian Lillard, if he decides to go to the Lakers, you know, it, there's a lot of different options and possibilities. For me, I think it's in his best interest to get out of there, but it has to be to a good enough team to where they can actually make a run. And you know, <clears throat> if he goes back to the Garden. Congratulations, another guy that ends up back home, but what's it going to do for your career? I'm never going to get off that hill. I'm never going to get off that mountain. Whether or not New York's able to give you a, another two or three year extension on top of what you already have, is the money worth losing? You're mad right now because you're losing. You're frustrated because the team isn't able to put in a winning culture and get out of the first round. Are you willing to sacrifice all of that because you put on a Nick jersey and make 30 to, 30 to $35 million a season? I don't know. That's just kind of what I have to say. Uh, but I, I, I would like to see Donovan Mitchell somewhere else where I know that he can do better.
Kevin, how much you want to bet if he goes to New York that Nick fans are going to instantly start claiming that the Knicks are going to the finals next? How much you want to bet? I don't so, know about no finals. I don't care how much money people think Kev, they got in New York. Kev, this is your city. You know them best. Like, <clears throat> you know Nick fans. Just, I, I got to know. Like, would they instantly go to, we're going to the finals if we get Donovan Mitchell? No, they know they're going back to the playoffs. They they know better than to be that dumb. Granted, I know for a fact that they were just being absolutely ridiculous after just one game of the regular season this year. You, Donovan doesn't give you the automatic finals appearance because you know you have to give up assets to get him. So whatever it is you think you have now, which isn't much, you're probably going to have to give up to get him because Utah's not letting him go for free. Well, and, and that's the thing is, I'm not 100% sold on the idea that he is leaving i think if it comes down to a situation where the front office has to pick on rudy gobert staying or donovan mitchell saying i mean that's an easy one i would ship rudy gobert out instantaneously like honestly as long as it's not to fucking dallas he can go wherever he wants guys do need a center i don't need that kind of center dallas needs a center i'm just saying decent option kick rocks kick rocks go back to france i don't give a shit but Despite that, I mean, when it comes to Donovan Mitchell, I mean, I'm actually going to say the opposite here. I think he's actually going to stay with Utah. I think he'll be in a Utah jersey next season. And here's why. If it really comes down to a situation where the front office has to pick between either Rudy Gobert or Donovan Mitchell, they're going to stick with Donovan Mitchell just because of the dynamic athleticism that he brings to that team. And I think... If you were to look at this from a front office perspective, would the team really take that big of a step back if Rudy Gobert was not on this team? It may take a slight step back, but not a sizable one compared to Donovan Mitchell potentially leaving. Because as far as I'm concerned, Donovan Mitchell is essentially the reason that keeps Utah a viable team in the Western Conference. Because when you look at the Western Conference from top to bottom, you've got Phoenix who's the number one seed this year. You have Memphis. That's a team on the rise. They're young, they're hungry, and they're not scared of anybody. You've got Golden State, who is championship pedigree. I mean, these guys have been in multiple championships, and their championship window is wide open as far as I'm concerned. And then Utah is in the mix, kind of similar to what Dallas is. Even though I think Dallas is kind of like on the precipice of possibly doing something pretty significant within the next year or two. Utah is kind of in like that four or five spot in the Western Conference. And if you were to take Donovan Mitchell out of that situation entirely, I don't even know that Utah would make the playoffs. Utah would struggle to make the playoffs. That's, just, that's despite the fact that they have some decent players um, outside of Donovan Mitchell. Like you could look at uh, Bogdanovich as a decent player. They still have Mike Conley, even though they, he's always injury prone. Uh, Jordan Clarkson is one of best bench players in the NBA. He's always somebody that's vying for six man of the year because, I mean, the guy is just a walking bucket uh, off the bench. But, I mean, outside of that, Utah gets thin. And and Donovan is really the guy that really brings a lot of energy and excitement to that team. And I remember when I was watching the, uh, the series between the Jazz and the Mavericks in the first round of the playoffs, the one thing that always kind of caught me with Donovan is whenever that team specifically meaning the Jazz here, whenever they got into a rhythm and Donovan was really hitting his shots, it almost got to a point where it, whatever sort of shot that he took, I didn't think that he was going to miss it. Like, when he gets into a zone, he is one of the most electrifying players to watch in the NBA. And it doesn't matter whether he's shooting behind the three-point line, hitting mid-range jump shots, or just driving into the lane. His game is just solid from top to bottom. And is essentially the main reason why Utah has been a decent team, not only in the Western Conference, but in the NBA for the last couple of years. Now, could it get to a point where he just gets frustrated that the team just cannot get over the hump to where they can make a Western Conference Finals appearance or even, you know, even better, making an NBA Finals appearance? That could definitely be a possibility. But a scenario could arise saying, where Donovan Mitchell points to the front office and says, we need to get better role players or we need to get more depth uh, on our bench to make it just a more well-rounded roster. And that could be a point that he could make to the front office with Utah this offseason. 
Because I know he's definitely getting frustrated by these early exits in the playoffs. I mean, anybody would, especially a, a guy of this caliber. And I think Utah is more than willing uh, to make adjustments to make this roster better. So I'm not sold on the idea that the Jazz are going to move on from Donovan Mitchell just because that he's frustrated. I mean, I understand the frustration completely. But, I mean, Damian Lillard has been in a very similar situation out in Portland. And he's held steadfast despite whatever sort of rumors have popped up about him potentially getting traded. So, I mean, we'll see how this offseason plays out uh, in regards to Donovan Mitchell. Um, I think if I had to put on somebody getting moved this offseason, it would be Rudy Gobert first, not Donovan Mitchell. Because I think Donovan Mitchell is just too valuable uh, for that franchise to give up. Unless they get an absolute massive haul in return for Donovan Mitchell. I don't see him getting moved this offseason. I think he sticks with Utah next season. But I do think that Utah is going to make a concerted effort to build a better roster around Donovan. Because at this point, it would tend to lead to that conclusion. Just because these first round exits or these early exits in the playoffs... Uh, they're unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. And I think the front office is fully aware of that. And I think they're going to do everything that they can uh, to try to make the situation better for Donovan in Utah and not to the point where they just ship him off because he's getting too frustrated. But we'll see how the offseason plays out. But I, I definitely see Donovan uh, coming back to the Jazz next year.